dear friends welcome to this edition of vbs neuro med this is a series of lectures in neuroanatomy entitled corona radiata now these are posted on youtube and uh, i have also called them as lockdown lectures because right now we are going through the covid pandemic and uh, since the classes are not running we are conducting the online uh, theory lectures therefore i have mentioned it as study from home videos this will at least take care of the theory part of the neuroanatomy hopefully we we should be able to uh, start the practicals as early as possible next i am dr bala subramanian i work as a professor in the department of anatomy st john's medical college bangalore india now let's take a look at the image based mcqs first i repeat uh, in this uh, mcq i may not be able to uh, give a long gap between the um, for every slide i may move it with the flow of the slides but then i recommend that students go through at leisure pause the video for every mcq think over think of an answer and then move ahead let's start mcq number 1 here is a horizontal section of the cerebrum roughly at the level of the interventricular foramen and there is a pointed structure there is a flashing arrow identify that structure there are four options given to you choose the correct answer next you this is a close up view of the same section that you saw in the previous slide mcq number 2 once again there is a flashing arrow identify what is that structure i repeat identify what is that structure the four choices are given obviously one of them is the correct answer mcq number 3 here is a coronal section where both the third ventricle and the lateral ventricles are seen identify the arrow the structure i uh, have pointed by the arrow there is a flashing arrow there it's pointed to a particular structure i repeat this is a coronal section roughly through the body of the lateral ventricle the third ventricle is also seen Uh, infra medially mcq number 4 again the same coronal section there is a flashing arrow pointing to a particular structure identify that structure last mcq it's a close up view of the lateral ventricle and the third ventricle in cross section the same coronal section as previous slide one particular item has been highlighted by a flashing arrow identify that structure now that is a short uh, overview of the uh, questions uh, of the image based uh, mcqs answers we will have a look at the end of the video after discussing the topic now discussion let's start the discussion now the lateral ventricles have been highlighted in this particular slide the third ventricle and the fourth ventricle are also shown but watch carefully the position the shape the size and the orientation of the lateral ventricles 
the lateral ventricle has a body shown by the topmost arrow, an anterior horn, a posterior horn, and an inferior horn. Now let's map these parts of the lateral ventricle with corresponding regions of the cerebrum. This slide is meant for that. The body is essentially confined to the parietal lobe, the frontal lobe, the anterior horn of the lateral ventricle projects into it, the posterior horn of the lateral ventricle projects into the occipital lobe, and finally, the inferior horn uh, goes into the uh, temporal lobe. That's why the lateral horn is C-shaped, uh, is C-shaped. Next, suppose we take a cross section at this level, that is interventricular foramen. The cross section will appear like this. Now, this section is a horizontal section. I repeat through the interventricular foramen. It's a wet specimen. Now, the anteriorly this area that we are discussing, namely the lateral ventricle, Roughly, the anterior edge of it is where the genu and the forceps minor is located and posteriorly where the splenium and the forceps major are located. Now, between these two uh, end regions or boundaries, we will try to identify the various parts of the lateral ventricle. We just had a brief in the previous two slides. Now, we are going to see the same in a horizontal section. You see, those two dotted lines, blue, white dotted lines, gives you a rough demarcation. The body is the middle part. Anterior horn is in front of the uh, dashed arrow, for the, the upper dashed arrow. Similarly, posterior horn is behind the lower dashed arrow. However, being a horizontal section at the level of the interventricular foramen, the inferior horn is not seen. For that, we will use a horizontal section come a temporal lobe dissected specimen from the museum. Now, as we pass through, this is just an interesting comparison. Now, you see, here is a specimen, this is a museum exhibit, where the section is horizontal, yet below the horizontal level, on one side, the uh, temporal lobe has been dissected and you can see the full length of the inferior horn. Now those are the parts of the lateral ventricle body, an anterior horn, posterior horn and an inferior horn. Next, let's have a look at a mid-sagittal section of the cerebrum. Obviously, the lateral ventricles are on either sides of the mid-sagittal plane, therefore it's not going to be seen. Nevertheless, watch out this particular item I have shown, septum pellicidum. The moment I remove the septum pellicidum, the cavity of the lateral ventricle becomes apparent. Let's do it and see it in the next slide. Now you see, here the septum pellicidum has been removed and now you can see the cavity of the lateral now I have enlarged that photograph. You can see there is the huge bridge of commissural fibers, the corpus callosum, right underneath that, the huge cavity of the uh, lateral ventricle is visible. Next, little, little, in, in, little better orientation. Well, we are in the cavity. Very important landmarks we can already see is the head of the caudate nucleus. Behind it is the body of the caudate nucleus. That yellow dashed line is the fornix. And right below it you can see the thalamus. These are important items that are seen in the floor of the lateral ventricle. Next, let us take a superior a view from the top that means the, as shown by the arrow of a cross section horizontal section of the um, cerebrum as shown in the previous uh, uh, slide now 
of that we are going to study in this particular video only the uh, body of the uh, lateral ventricle we will reserve the anterior posterior and the inferior horn discussion for another uh, yeah, separate video now here you can see the septum pellucidum right in the middle next below it is the fornix on on either sides is the body of the lateral ventricle in other words the septum pellucidum and the fornix is a common midline uh, partition for either side that means medial wall is septum pellucidum and the fornix for both the ventricles you can also see the large superior surface of the thalamus and a little more laterally the body of the caudate nucleus in fact when you trace it up you can even see the head of the caudate nucleus um, projecting into the anterior horn next a few more important details that is visible on first look that's what i am trying to cover you can see the choroid plexus uh, in that uh, slit uh, between the fornix and the uh, thalamus now that slit is the choroid fissure through the choroid fissure the tela choroidea projects and through that the vessels come in and that's the choroid plexus that secretes csf remember it's the same choroid plexus that also supplies Uh, the third ventricle you can see as uh, noted before body of the caudate nucleus in the thalamus i would remove the labels for the sake of orientation but what is striking in this particular slide is the stria terminalis you see that flashing arrow is pointing to another important identifiable structure the stria terminalis once again in the floor of the uh, lateral ventricle next uh, oval dashed uh, the, the dashed white come red oval area is only for reference it is the third ventricle it's not the focus of the current discussion remember this is a horizontal section so you may likely to see a slit like gap representing the third ventricle now again the body of the caudate nucleus is once again highlighted the stria terminalis and the thalamus striate vein is shown in this section you can see the location of the vein is a small black dot there that way you can identify the thalamus striate vein next again the third ventricle has been highlighted and you can see supra laterally the body of the thalamus of the lateral ventricle you can also see the fornix and the septum pellucidum right in the midline now we come to another series of slides this is the coronal section of the cerebrum roughly at the mid uh, part of the body of the lateral ventricle where right below the third ventricle is also very well seen so far we have seen the horizontal section now we are seeing the coronal section roughly in the mid body you can see the triangular outline of the lateral ventricle it has a midline a medial wall a superior wall and a floor these are the three parts of this lateral ventricle the roof is the corpus callosum shown here by a arrow the roof is a corpus callosum a group of commissural fibers running uh, between the two cerebral hemispheres the cavity of the lateral ventricle is right below it next see that's the corpus callosum next forming the medial wall i repeat is the midline septum pellucidum and below that the fornix these two form the common medial wall for both the lateral ventricles next the floor is the most important in the sense there are 
three four structures worth uh, remembering and they are all visible very clearly to the naked eye in a uh, well dissected uh, brain now see this is again i repeat the floor of uh, the lateral ventricle seen in a uh, coronal section of the um, cerebrum uh, where the mid body of the um, lateral ventricles and the third ventricle is is clearly uh, shown now the caudate nucleus we have seen earlier in a horizontal section but now watch the same caudate nucleus body in the um, floor in a coronal section remember it is a small uh, circular area in the lateral most part of the floor likewise at the medial most part of the floor is is an elevation caused by the superior surface of the thalamus i have shown it as uh, a, a lower arrow next between the two that is between the caudate nucleus and the thalamus we have seen earlier in the horizontal section the stria terminalis that stria terminalis and the thalamostriate vein are located in between the caudate nucleus and the thalamus on the uh, roof of the thalamus therefore there is an important structure in the floor of the lateral ventricle now between the thalamus and the um, fornix there is a small slit now, through the slit the choroid plexus projects into the uh, lateral ventricle now you see this is a further blow up of the area where the lateral ventricle and the third ventricle is seen that gap which i mentioned just now is the choroid fissure through the choroid fissure the tela choroidea that is the pyel membrane and the blood vessels within it uh, move into the uh, lateral ventricle and that's the choroid plexus projecting through the choroid fissure repeat contains choroid plexus and the tela choroidea now let's revisit the image based mcqs because we'll have to i suppose that in the discussion the answers have been found let's now have a, a look at the mcqs once again with answers now you see mcq number 1 the structure is in the midline yes sagittal Uh, structure mid sagittal structure that's the septum pellucidum the fornix is right behind it and in front is the corpus callosum the gene of the corpus callosum next mcq number 2 the pointed structure is the stria terminalis the area is the floor of the lateral ventricle you can see lateral to the stria terminalis the body of the caudate nucleus and medial to the stria terminalis the uh, superior surface of the thalamus interestingly in this the thalamus striate vein is not very clearly seen mcq number 3 that's the corpus callosum forming the roof of the lateral ventricle you can see the midline curtain the septum pellucidum separating the two lateral ventricles that's the corpus callosum a set of commissural fibers huge band of commissural fibers a huge bridge of commissural fibers connecting the two cerebral hemispheres mcq number 4 now the swelling that you see the elevation that you see in the floor is just next to the fornix so that has to be the thalamus if the same arrow was a little more lateral then it would have been the caudate nucleus last one projecting through the choroid fissure is the choroid plexus uh, very very clearly seen in this particular photograph now that was a brief overview of the body of the lateral ventricle please remember the discussion on the lateral ventricle is not complete we still have another video 
where we will cover its extensions namely details of the anterior on posterior on and the inferior on i hope you have uh, found this video useful if you have any uh, points to mention as feedback feel free to uh, write to me at this uh, email id or better still you can uh, uh, write it in the blog area immediately below the um, youtube video and students who find this series of videos uh, interesting and useful can also subscribe to this channel it is a free subscription access is free by subscribing and pressing the bell icon you will be assured of notifications every time a new video is added thank you my dear friends all the best